Now that SOLIDWORKS 2025 is firmly in everybody's hands, I want to revisit my top 10 list, my favorite things in this brand new release. Let's get started. First up is ZUP in Document Templates. When you know you're going to be using data on both SOLIDWORKS and the 3D Experience platform, it's helpful to have those origins aligned. Now, the platform defaults to the Z axis being up, as do a lot of civil engineering products like AutoCAD and other 2D products. So setting it before modeling is the best approach, and that the template is the perfect place to do it. This game time decision exists when you start a brand new part or assembly using the SOLIDWORKS 2025 templates. Now this is important because there's no workflow to update older templates to this functionality. So what you'll need to do is save as from the 2025 part and assembly templates, and then go ahead and modify the document properties to suit. From then on, when you start a new part or assembly, you've got a choice between Y up and Z up. Now, the great part about this is that it not only moves the Z axis into place, but it keeps the front, top, and right side planes in alignment the same way that SOLIDWORKS always has. Now, for existing SOLIDWORKS parts and assemblies, we've been able to make a similar change for quite some time. However, it's not quite the same. You open up an existing file and hit your spacebar, and this opens up the view orientation box. Now, here we have an option that allows us to go ahead and change from Y up to Z up. The difference on this is that it simply reorients the part or assembly so that Z is pointing up, but doesn't make a wholesale change to the orientation of all front, top, right, and other planes that have been generated. Now, as you can probably imagine, that's pretty heavy lifting, maybe SOLIDWORKS 2026. Next up, and definitely a fan favorite, delete below the rollback bar. That's right, we've all been there. You know those times where you take the rollback bar and pull it up the tree a little bit? And you either make a pretty significant change to a feature or add just a whole bunch of features. Now you know rolling the bar back down to the bottom is just gonna create a bloody mess, not to mention the time you have to wait to watch that failed feature regenerate. Well now, you can delete any feature below the rollback bar so we don't have to go through that performance hit just so we can delete features that we know are gonna blow up anyway. Again, we've all been there. Change is going to break features, but we've gotta have these really great, simple, high-performance workflows to be able to deal with just the simple thing that happens as parts evolve and as iteration takes place. Moving right along on my favorite new features of SOLIDWORKS 2025, you can now create circular and linear patterns of reference geometry. Creating linear copies of planes has always been secretly easy. You just use the control key and pick and drag. But it creates a series of planes that are dimensioned from the sea, not each other. A list of favorite new features always comes from a personal perspective. But over the years, the ones that stand out for me are the enhancements that automate the tedious and make them smart to boot. With a linear pattern of reference geometry like planes, you have a history-based feature that's easy to edit. While the linear pattern might look like somewhat of a lateral move, circular patterns of reference geometry are definitely a game changer. There really was no good way to do this before. Now for all you sheet metal fans out there, enter multi-length flange. Now this tool is fantastic because it's another checkmark enhancement that opens up a whole new level of productivity for the users. Whenever you're making an edge flange using two or more edges, you can now have an independent length for each and every one of those edges, opening up infinite geometric possibilities in any design scenario. This feature is basically the multi-length fillet, but for flanges and sheet metal. Really simple, but again, an incredible impact because it bakes multiple flanges now into a single feature in the feature tree. This one also gets a bit of an honorable mention because when you make edge flanges, those edge flange sketches now come out fully defined. Not enough to be a top 10 on its own, but definitely a notable new feature. Now, while we're on the subject of sheet metal, there's another one that absolutely stands out this year, and that is bend notches. Now, for a lot of the people out there that have a fairly manual bending process, you makers and small business people out there, I'm looking at you, this tool is going to unlock a level of consistency that you've never imagined. All you do is hit flatten and the handy bend notches tool appears. Now either select on screen or hit the handy dandy collect all bends button. Now there's three options for shape, depending on the need and your process. Now just hit OK and there you go. 
And what's great here is that this will enable you to align your bends on a manual press brake much more consistently than ever before. Now, because the notches happen by pressing the flatten button, it doesn't actually create a history-based feature in the tree. So you're only gonna see these notches in the flat pattern, which is okay because for the manufacturing process, it will be there, especially when you export your code to a 2D cutter. But a wonderful tool for adding that extra level of consistency at the production point. This next one is a small addition that adds a great workflow. I bring you Document Groups. If you find yourself regularly working on many files of a project, or it's simply quitting time for the day and you're ready to log off and want to pick up where you left off tomorrow, document groups are what you've been looking for. You can make a new document group using any combination of the files you currently have open. And then open them back up again with a single click during your next session. If you begin to have several document groups stacking up, you can give them a strategic name so that you can easily pick them from the list later. After 30 years in the game, it's not just CAD functionality that improves your workflow. And this is one of those tools. Yet another new checkmark option making a big impact is the continuous edge blend in the variable radius filler. Whenever you create complex geometry, whether it's a consumer good or medical device, there's always going to be complex filleting and fillets that run into fillets. When you're making a variable radius fillet, you can now slide all the way down to the fillet options and turn on continuous edge blend. And you see the difference it makes on this part right here. Filleting is one of those things that's always the final touch on a very complex and organic shape. And with this extra option, we can now control even the most complex fillet situations to have the right output for our production methods and for the way that we want this part to look in a visually lit environment. These are the types of enhancements that provide the largest return, requiring the user to learn absolutely nothing except to be aware of its existence, but now have a simple yet very powerful tool added to their arsenal. A great new addition to assemblies, Copy with Mates now supports advanced and mechanical mates. If you do a lot of repetitive assembly or use a significant amount of fasteners in your designs and you aren't using Copy with Mates, you're missing out. For those of you who don't know about this awesome time saver, Copy with Mates now supports advanced and mechanical mates too, opening up a whole new level of productivity when creating assemblies. When copying a subassembly, of course the internal mates go with it, but anything external, including an angular limit mate, is now available. Leveraging existing work to quickly move forward is a hallmark of a productivity feature like this. Next is automatic repair of dangling sketch relations and dimensions. When dimensions have an issue, there's always been a way to reattach a dangling dimension. Sometimes it might even seem easier to just simply delete and redo the dimension, but I highly, highly recommend against that practice. You see, each dimension has an email-like address to it. And if you delete a dimension that participates in an equation or a global variable or any number of other situations, you're going to break a bunch of things downstream. So it's always best to simply repair an existing dimension as opposed to deleting and reinserting it. Now, the typical process when a dimension has a dangling relation is you simply click the end of the witness line and drag that little red dot over to a new edge or face to redefine it. Now, the repair is simply a right click away. For situations where you might need a far more effective tool, now we can go to the Display Delete Relations tool and simply click this magic button, Repair All Dangling Relations. There you have it. Talk about a productivity tool. Next in our new capabilities in SOLIDWORKS 2025 is actually more of an enhancement specific to 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS. Now, SOLIDWORKS Connected can run local add-ins from your network licenses. This includes model-based definition, inspection, and SOLIDWORKS CAM. In addition to that, SOLIDWORKS Connected now supports desktop PDM. This allows for an incredible level of flexibility for companies who have existing SOLIDWORKS desktop licenses running local SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional, but want the flexibility of 3D experience licensing that's offered by the cloud. Great for IT and great for those users and flexibility. Well, there you have it. My top 10 favorite features in SOLIDWORKS 2025. Now, favorites list usually come from a personal perspective. So if there's something you thought should have been on that list, Comment below. 
tell me why it's so important to you. and Maybe I'll make a video about it. While you're here, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already to Go Engineer and hit that notification button so that you'll get notified every time we upload content like this. Until next time, I'm Darren at Go Engineer.